All right, so the, the question just posed to me was about stretching before playing. Am I right? Okay, so go ahead and tell me about um, tell me about that for you well, and what you want to ask about it. What I'm finding is if I'm, if I'm about to play and, you know, sometimes I'll go up and I'll play a gig and all of a sudden I'll just start locking up. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've had that happen to me a couple times. Um, I don't know, sometimes even particularly in, like, really like important gigs that I'm about to play, I think it might just be like a stress factor or something. But, you know, I'll go, I'll get up there and all of a sudden, like, I just have no wrist movement, everything, the arms, that mm -hmm. I'm just forcing it. So, um, I was wondering if you could show me some good techniques to do. Well, let's, let's talk about the, what I would consider to be really more of the mental, mental thing that you have to deal with first. Um... When you, uh, obviously you play out a lot, right? You would say you probably play out more than your average drummer, and by drummer I mean anybody who's playing drums. Like maybe you're not playing full-time professionally, but you're definitely like semi-pro playing over the average drummer, right? How often do you think this is occurring to you? Mm -hmm. if, if you have to give it a percentage. Like do you think you're cramping up or well, locking up like this like 10% of the time or 20% of the time? I would say probably like one out of 15 or something like that. Okay, so like less than 10% of the time, like maybe yeah. around like 7 It's not a ma it's not like a major problem, but you know. Um, it's annoying though, right? Yeah. It's and frustrating, super frustrating. Okay. Now, um let's talk about what's going on when this happens. Um Describe to me what it feels like to you. Just like you have no movement in your wrists. Like it's just everything is super tense and like every movement has to come from like forearm or there's just no finger movement it's all arm everything and just like playing faster stuff is just like almost impossible so have you noticed at all in those moments any um common factors like uh like are you eating or not eating before the gig are you drinking a certain amount of fluid or not or are you drinking uh like beer or are you uh are you exercising beforehand or, or how's your sleep going are you noticing any any sort of common stuff no, nah, not really. Okay. So let's talk about kind of my opinion or view on the mental aspect of what you're dealing with. Um, our brain obviously, and by obvious is like, I mean, you're an adult and you've lived a significant amount of life at this point. So you're, you're aware that your brain has a lot to do with just how your body's functioning at any given point in time. And obviously our nerves can play a big part in that when we're gigging. Um, it's a type of performance anxiety. Like some people get a performance anxiety where they get really like clammy and nervous and just stuttery and, and just shaky and stuff. Other people may not have those kind of um, symptoms, but they may lock up, like you said. And so it could be that for you. So like that's one thing to explore is let's talk about that aspect of it. When you're approaching a gig, those moments when you're feeling like you're locking up and you know you're a little bit nervous, it feels like what you just described but let's address like the source of the nervousness. What what about that particular gig is common between any other gigs that might seem to be causing that anxiety? Mm -hmm. Is it is it because like there's people you know in the audience that you want to play well for, like maybe important people like in the industry, or maybe it's like family people that you just really want to impress? Like talk to talk to me about that kind of stuff. Um, last time I noticed we did it was when we were playing in the O'Connell Center. So so O'Connell Center, big crowd, yeah, big so stadium yeah. in in our town. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that I think had. A, now, what was the what was that event? Uh, it was. Uh, it wasn't Gator Growl. No, no it wasn't. Was an were you opening up for a band or was it a talent show? It was like yeah, it was kind of like a talent show type of deal. And I mean, the sh the gig was a disaster for sound reasons, um, not pertaining to our performance. But I remember having that issue there, um, and just because of the fact that. I think, uh, you know, with the fact that the uh, is essentially, if we win this thing, gets us into a bigger performance. All right, so it's like a competitive yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. That might have something to do with it. But I feel like if I stretched properly <laughs> beforehand, that also helped me um, and warmed up. Because I didn't, I didn't stretch, I didn't warm up, I didn't do anything like that. So that's actually what I really want to ask you. What's a good way to, like, stretch and, like, Okay, so since we're kind of trying to focus on the mental side for right now, oh. let's 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 talk about what you can do to mentally prepare yourself for a gig. 
Oh, okay, sure. Um, because that can affect your cramping up or stiffness. And, and it could also be physical, but we'll talk about that in a minute because the physical stuff is actually a lot easier to address than the mental stuff. The mental stuff is kind of like playing a puzzle with your own brain. How do I trick my brain into just chilling out? So I don't know that I have like a magic solution that covers all aspects of performance anxiety and how people deal with it or can deal with it or cope with it. But some things that... Um, I've heard about people doing or that I've done for myself that seem to be effective. Uh, some people like a quiet time, like or meditating before they have a gig. They try to clear their mind, and, and it can look like whatever it is that you want it to look like. But whatever that thing that is about the gig that you're anxious about, trying to distract yourself from that. Now, some people just like to be busy and then play the gig and then be done with it, and that helps them get through their anxiety. I'm kind of that way. If I have time to sit idly before a gig, that's when I start clamming up and getting nervous about it for me. So I'm kind of, a lot of times, a person that just needs to be busy, and then I just have to go do the gig like it's just another thing on my to-do list that day. And that helps me get through it sometimes. Um, but other people may, may not be that way. They may need to just some quiet time alone, maybe in a dressing room, warming up on a pad, just kind of chilling out, maybe drinking a beer, maybe uh, just watching TV, um, or exercising, you know, whatever it is for you. And, and this is very much... You, you want to kind of gear yourself towards other things in your life that you already do this with. Let's say you had a, I don't know, like a, a date that you were going to go out on. You know, what do you do? If you're nervous about that date, what are some things that you do to try to chill out? Or like if you have a test and you know that you're pretty much prepared for the test, but you're still nervous about it anyway. So what are the things that you do to try to chill out or relax yourself before you go do that? You want to kind of look at those things and try to bring that over to your performance world because that's a good place to start. But then you'll fine tune it and find other things that seem to work better for you. I've heard it said that if you eat bananas, that can calm your mood down. It has uh, chemicals in it that changes your body chemistry to help you feel like happier and less stressed. But it also has things like potassium in it, which is really great, good for your body, helps you to limber up and stuff. Uh, people who work out a lot will consume a lot of potassium because it has not so much that it's healing the muscles, but it helps um, with aspects related to repair and um, relaxing and things of that nature. You know, I, I, I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't speak professionally about that kind of stuff. But I've heard things like that. Um, so now we're kind of crossing over into the physical side of it. Um, I think for most people, naturally, if you're talking about like a locking up, and let's say it's a muscle thing, if it's a muscle thing, usually people will start saying, well, maybe you're dehydrated. You know, you need to drink more fluids, whatever it is, like electrolytes, vitamin water, regular water, whatever it is that seems to work for you, drink more of that stuff. Because if you're getting muscle cramps and stuff, that's kind of the big thing. It's not even really about stretching. It's about being limber. And if you don't, our body's like 90% water. If you're having a deficit of water in your system, you're going to lock up. And that's also going to affect things like your thinking, for instance. People who drink on a regular basis, for instance, tend to have a an altered sort of emotional state. And I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not referring to intoxication, I'm just saying people who drink on a regular basis, that changes your brain chemistry, so the way that you think about things emotionally is gonna be different than somebody maybe who doesn't drink at all. And so water being 90% of your body, if you have a deficit of water in your head, it's gonna have a, uh, an effect on how you think about things, maybe your emotional standpoint. But then also your physical.